Good morning, everybody. Today is third December two thousand and twenty. The day is Thursday. My name is Farhan Mazhar, and right now I am with the eleven Cambridge class, and we have started working on the winter two thousand and twenty. Sorry, winter two thousand nineteen two one paper. It's a theory paper. We call it the paper two, and we are working on is section B. and we have done uh, question number 8 and question number 9 today's task is to complete the question number 10 okay so uh, on your screen i hope you can see it's visible that we have question number right now we have question number uh, 10 in front of you yeah let me increase the size okay so the first question question number 10 of the section b visible light is one component of the electromagnetic spectrum state the speed of the light in a in a vacuum this is a number it's a fact which you should remember so what's the speed of light in the vacuum do you remember hello can you hear me Yes, sir. So, do you know what is the speed of light in vacuum? Three hundred thousand kilometer per second. Three hundred thousand. Ah, uh, three expo eight meter per second in kilometers. It will be three expo five uh, kilometer per second. But in meters, the most uh, famous number is in meter per second that is 3 expo 8 meter per second okay sir the done sir maine aapko pichle kaam ke bhi video bhej di thi picture bhej di thi whatsapp pe yes i know yes yes i have got it i will make a video on this paper once i have this whole questions okay today okay, we will sir. complete this paper then i will make a video on this paper so you on your screen you can see 3 expo 8 meter per second okay so next part next question next part state the colors of the visible spectrum i have told you a code word uh, roy g biv the code word is roy g biv and we can see i say roy uh g and biv this is the code word ha huh? you remember this yes roy sir. g biv red orange yellow green blue indigo violet so you can write these names in your booklet red orange yellow green blue indigo violet this is the order of the color done sir is done okay yes so now we are moving to the next part uh the next part let me reduce the size a little bit okay an object o of the height 3 cm is placed 4 cm from the center of a diverging lens figure 10.1 shows the object o the diverging lens and the two focal points means the principal focuses f1 and f2 of the lens okay so what they want they want determine the focal length of the lens so what is the focal length of the lens okay so uh, let's uh, you see this five small squares five small squares they represent 1 cm okay you, you will not use a scale to measure the focal length from the optical center to this f that's the focal length from the optical center of the lens till this f1 that is a that is focal length okay so how you will measure it you will count the squares okay 
So let's count the squares. For example, this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. 30. So this is uh, 30 small squares away from the optical center. So if something is 30 small squares away, 5 small squares means 1 centimeter. So 30 means 6 centimeters. So his question was determine the focal length of this lens. So from, the, from this given graph, I have just counted the squares. You have your hard copy, you have your booklets with you, na, of this paper? Sir, this is... It will be six centimeters. Yes, sir, six centimeters. Winter or summer paper? This is winter 2019. October, November 2019, 2.1 booklet. Yes. 2.1 booklet? Yeah. You have missed last class. We have done 8 and 9 question of section B. And it's 10th question. Okay. Next part. Okay. So let's move to the next part. You should have this booklet with you. You should have a calculator with you. You should have a geometry box with you. Okay. So, the next question is, the second part, the diverging lens produces an image of object O. On figure 10.1, draw rays from tip of the O, locate this image and label it I. Okay. So, let me take this diagram and paste it in the paint and then we will do the. You should have a scale and a pencil with you. If you have the scale and the pencil with you, then we can work on, on it. I will open this in the paint and I will draw the thing. Let me open the paint file. Okay. Hmm. So here we come. If you want to... Uh, find or locate the position of uh, the image we use two or three rays and they start from the head of the object they start from the head of the object and the first ray moves parallel to the principal axis let me draw that for you like this Okay. Can you see this red line? Yes. Yes, sir. So that's the... Okay. Then I will... I will pass from here. This will pass from the optical center on that side. With the help of the scale and the pencil, you will draw these uh, lines on on your paper. Okay. Now the second ray, the second ray, supposed to be starting from the head of the object, and it will pass from the optical center. You see. Okay. So you see. On this side, they are not intersecting each other. Okay. On this diagram, let, let me read the question again. Because here that they are not intersecting each other. Before. Okay. Let me read the statement again. Visible light is one component. Okay. An object O of the height 3 centimeters is placed 4 centimeters from the center of diverging lens. Figure 
10.1 shows object O, the diverging lens, and the two focal points, principal focuses, F1 and F2 of the lens. Okay. okay, what was his question? The diverging lens produces an image of object O on figure 10.1 by drawing two rays of uh, from the tip of locate this image and label it I. Hmm. The problem is, there is the problem. The focal length, our answer is right. That is 6 centimeter. Okay. Any two rays drawn from paraxial ray that refracts and seems to come from F1. Ray through the optical center of the lens. Ray that aims for F2 but refracts and emerges. Paraxial ray tracks back to the point. Labeled I and rest of the image drawn down to the page. Okay. So let me draw. Okay. So here. Now what we will do. Because on this side they will not intersect. So the image will be virtual. You know it's a. Oh my God. We made a mistake. What sir? We made a mistake. Let me show you. By mistake, this is not a convex lens. This is a concave lens. Okay. Diverging lens. Yeah, the ray is supposed to diverge. So let me show you. This is the one ray which starts from the, uh, you know, head of the Okay, then it will diverge. Sorry, I thought it's a convex lens. It's it is a concave lens, which is diverging lens. Then this ray will diverge. And it will diverge as if it is coming from the F on the same side. Okay, this line here, see very carefully this line this line here this should be dotted line okay so the ray came from here and i joined this point and f1 and i prolonged it i also prolonged it behind here this portion here should be dotted i don't have an option of dotted line here so that's why i just made a continuous line okay then I will use some other color. Okay. It will start from the head of the object and it will go into the optical center. You see, like this. Understand? Started from the head of the object and it passes from the optical center of the lens. Sir, I have a red line. It's a diverging lens. Okay. It's a diverging lens. Na? So the light comes from the head of the object, moves parallel to the principal axis. After passing through the lens, it diverges. And when you look from here, it appears to be coming from this axis. Okay. Okay, so look, okay. So where these two lines intersected each other, wherever they intersected each other, that will be the image. This is a virtual image. So this is the image. Okay. Label it as I. We will label it as I. G, do you understand? Yes, sir. Have you drawn this thing on your uh, actual copy? Yes. Copy? Yes, sir. Yes. 
so you are also able to get the image yes okay so you know i made a mistake i thought it's a i, I did not pay attention that is a diverting lens okay yes okay now we move to the he says determine the height of the image okay we have to determine what is the height of the image we can determine it you see this is the height of the image we can count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 
uh, a real image can be projected onto a screen. Light actually passes through a real image on the same side of the lens as the object. And this is for the virtual image. Or on opposite side of the mirror to the object. Yes, can you write these two differences? Sir, I have to look at yeah, virtual image you? cannot be captured on screen, but the real can be captured on screen. Virtual, this is one difference. virtual image is erect, but the real image is inverted. Yeah, that can also be a difference. And uh, or you can say the virtual image is formed by a just imaginary lines. Just you imagine that there are lines. Okay, sir. The yes. real image is actually intersection of two light rays. Muskan, you have written the answer? Yes, sir. So what is your answer? Just read the, your answer. Virtual image have to seen from a lens. Real image can be projected onto a screen. Light can be light can pass through a real image. Virtual image is erect and real image is inverted. You have to only write two differences. For example, if you say that the virtual image is erect and the real image is inverted, that's a one difference. And one real image. Another can be that the virtual image uh, is erect. This one we have discussed. Okay, and the, the second difference can be virtual image cannot be captured on a screen or cannot be projected on a screen, whereas the real image can be projected onto a screen. So now these are two. You see, one technical mistake uh, I have just noticed that is that when you write, uh, you, for example, you are supposed to write one difference. Okay, so you are telling a difference uh, for the virtual, and when you talked about this, you are supposed to give the same diff same property of the real. For example, if I say the the virtual image is erect, the real image is upright. Uh, I mean uh, inverted. And for example, if you say that the virtual image can be cannot be captured on a screen, whereas the real image can be captured on a screen. You see, so for both of them, you talk the same property. Okay. Ms. Muskan, do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. So should we move? Can we move to the next one? State one you the question is state one use for a diverging lens. One use for a diverging lens. Okay. So diverging lens uh, where is the diverging lens used? If you want, I think it's used in the yeah. Muskar, what you want to say? Sir, short sighted lens may be to use with there. The, huh? Yes, correction of the short sighted myopia is uh, that thing is called myopia. Converging lens, oh, sorry, I'm saying converging. Diverging lens is used to correction for the correction of the short sighted person. You remember that thing? Provide a wider beam. What are you saying? Sir, short-sighted, who are they? 
who can see the near object but cannot see the objects which are far away for example i am short sighted i can see the things which are near i can see them clearly but the objects which are far away i cannot see them clearly matlab dur ki kamzor hoti hai yes okay next part okay so now we are moving to the deep part light passing from air into glass refracts in a similar way to a water wave passing from deep water into shallow water figure 10.2 represents light passing from air into glass at an angle to the surface okay so this is light rays which are entering and he has shown the wavefronts of light okay so one side of a wavefront strikes the glass before the other other side explain why the wavefronts change direction as the light enters the glass you see uh, speed of light change you see when the light will enter from air into glass in glass the speed of light is slow in air the speed of light is fast so the portion of the wave front which comes in the glass that portion becomes slow but the portion of the wave front which is still outside the outside in the air that is fast still fast because it's still in air so what happened the wave front will change its direction this is happening because the, when the light will enter into the glass the speed of the light will slow down when the speed of the light will slow down the light rays will bend towards normal so that's why the direction of the wave front has changed let me check how much is the marks oh god it is of 3 marks This question is of three marks. Don't write its answer. Let's check first of all the marking scheme. Okay, he says these uh, all the one one mark. Uh, every uh, point has one mark. One thing which you should mention is light travels more slowly in glass or light changes speed. This point we have discussed. One side, left hand side of the wave front slows down first. You see, if you look at the diagram. if you look at that diagram uh you see this wave front the the left side of the wave front will enter into the glass first and in the glass it will become slow but its right side is still outside in the air and it's fast so obviously when if this these wheels become slow and these wheels are still fast so obviously the the vehicle will will take a turn towards the towards the normal You understand this point? Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So the one mark is for telling this thing, and the wavelength decreases or wave front travels at a shorter distance at the same time. Okay. So another thing which happens is when the speed will slow, the wavelength will become smaller. If the speed will become faster. the wavelength will also become larger do you understand this thing yes sir okay so will you uh, kindly write the answer the answer in your booklet and then we will hear what answer you have written so i can make corrections in that Shabash, Shabash. Write your answer. The marking scheme is also showing on the screen. Sir, I have yeah. my answer. Yes, Then yes, I... yes. Please read your answer. When light will enter water, the speed of light will slow down. Mm -hmm. That light is one will... mark. Light will bend toward the direction of the light will bend toward normal. Yeah. Wavelength will decrease. 
you are writing you see when the light enters into the glass the speed of the lights become smaller it slow down the wave front uh, the left side of the wave front is entering the glass first that's why the direction of the wave front will change another thing which is happening is that the wavelength of the of the light waves is also decreasing that's why sir many like wave wave fronts have changed sir maine likha hai light speed decreases as it enters glass left side of the wave front enters glass first so it slows down first this causes change in direction light will move towards normal wavelength of light decreases how many lines you have used equal four lines four lines okay just a one point came in my mind that we should say that the left side of the wave front entered into the glass first as compared to the right side of the wave front okay sir you wrote now or we were also saying this that the left side entered first that's it huh? we said that i'm just wondering that uh, if there is space then you should write this otherwise no but if the scope the the space is filled then we don't need to write this mm, sir ho gaya okay so muskan muskan yes sir yes sir do you understand there was some a little bit more things to be added in your answer The main points were complete. Sir, अब क्या करना है आज? अभी we will start the next uh, paper. So uh, we will I will stop the recording and then we will start it again. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So so by doing this, we have done we have completed the uh, you know the section B. We have worked only on the. section b of winter october november 2019 to one paper and section b we have completed why are we not doing section a a uh, section a uh, i have recorded a video on the section a already and i will share it in the google classroom and you will complete your section a of this paper okay sir we i will send that in the in, in your you know on this weekend Okay, so uh, I am stopping this video. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day. God bless you all.